Hi guys, uh, welcome to another video. I uh, hope you're all keeping well. Uh, now, uh, for this video, uh, I'd just like to respond uh, to a tag, uh, a tag invitation. Um, I've, I've been given a couple of uh, questions here um, on uh, horror movies. Um, so, um, as I say, I'm just responding now with me, with me answers. Uh, now, the person who's tagged me is Leo from the Geek Legion of Doom channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, uh, Leo's channel, go along uh, there now and subscribe because he's a fantastic uh, reviewer. Uh, he reviews a lot of B-movies and he's really good at what he does. You know, he really goes into detail about each movie and the pros and cons of, you know, about, about each production. Um, and he has uh, one or two guys uh, sort of like helping him out as well, doing the reviews as well. It's, a, it's one of the best, I think it's one of the best channels on YouTube, yeah. The Geek Legion of Doom. So as I say, if you haven't subscribed to, to his channel, I'll come here now. I'll leave the link down below here uh, so you can go along and subscribe. Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, I'll just read 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 out the questions what Le what Leo gave me in his tag, and I'm going to give you me the um, answers. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, the first question is, what was the what was the first horror movie you you ever watched, and how did it shape your love for the genre today? Well, that's easy. Uh, Frankenstein from 1931, starring the late great Boris Karloff. Um, as I've said many, many times, so you can see his face there, yeah. Uh, as I've said many, many times in my previous videos, Frankenstein 1931 was the movie that first got me into horror. Um, I, I, I vivid, vividly remember watching it way back in the late 60s on, on, on our old black and white telly uh, when it used to come on on a Monday night with the, under the appointment with Fear Banner. And when I first saw that movie, I was absolutely hooked. I, I became an instant horror fan. And, of course, when they started showing all the Universal movies every week, uh, on, on ITV, you know, I, I never missed them yet. So yeah, so that's me. Uh, that's that's that, that's the answer to the first question. You have to excuse me, guys. Uh, I've got all the questions here written down, so it's just like don't forget anything. Yeah. So that's me answer to the first question. What the first horror movie you ever what watched? Uh, what what it was and how did it shape your love? Yeah, Frankenstein, uh, starring the late great Boris Karloff from 1931. Okay, uh, moving on to a uh, question number two. Uh, watch your favourite horror movie franchise. Well, this is going to be a difficult one because I've got so many. Um, uh, I love Halloween. I love Friday the 13th. I love the Psycho movies. I love the Christopher Lee Dracula franchise. You know, Piece of Cushion, Frankenstein, Syria, yeah. of course, the Universal, the Wolfman, Frankenstein. Yeah, I've got so many. Uh, I couldn't really name a particular favourite. But if it, was, if it was pushed to name a modern one, I guess it would have to be Halloween. Yeah, okay, so uh, that's the answer to the second question. The third question is, uh, what, what movie, what, what movie that still scares you today? Um, uh, that's a difficult one because being an Arthur's horror fan, uh, right from my younger days, I've, been, I've watched loads of, hundreds and hundreds of horror movies um, over the years and uh, the more you watch them the more desensitised you become to them and that I mean what, what frightens you as a kid no longer frightens you um, and, and, and of course if you, a lot of you horror fans will, will certainly echo my my uh, sentiments on that yeah um, but it will, if it was to push if it was to be pushed I could say one movie that really cr gave me the creeps and still sort of like makes me uneasy today is the original Alien from 1979 uh, directed by Ridley Scott especially the chest burst scene with John Hayes oh I still can't watch that scene today guys without Winston yeah one of the most horrendous scenes ever in, in a movie yeah and just imagine watching that in the dark in cinema in 1979 when Alien first came out how grossed out, how grossed out say, people must have been then, you know, when he first saw it. I mean, when I read it in the paper in 1979, what, you know, what happened in that, you know, I even, even the thought of it grossing me out. And of course, when I seen it on the telly a couple of years later, you know, oh God, it was really sickening, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I'd say like Alien, yeah. And then there's another pretty gross out scene in Vincent Price's Theatre of Blood. That's the one where he becomes like a, a sort of like a, he's like a, this actor, this Shakespeare actor, and he exacts a gruesome revenge on each of the critics that write bad things about him. And that there's one particular, there was a couple of grisly deaths in that involving one at Poodle Pie. Well, if, if you know what the movie, what you know, if you've read, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. Yeah, oh god, another another scene I still can't watch to this day. Yeah, so there you go. That's my answer to um, it's my answer to question three. Uh, question four: uh, What movies do you think are 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 overhyped? 
Well, there's been a few over the years, hasn't it? I mean, the Blair Witch Project instantly comes to mind. Never really been able to get why, why so many people like that movie. I thought it was very boring, nothing hardly happened in it, it had a lot of talk in it, and that I, I blame that, I actually, I blame that responsible, that movie alone, for spawning all these fan footage movies now, which I'm, I'm not a fan of. They've got to be very, very good. There's only a handful really I like, uh, you know, but I'm not a great fan of, I'm not, I'm not a great fan of fan footage movies yet. So yes, I'd say The Blair Witch Project, uh, Don't Look Now, the Donald Sutherland movie, I thought that was a, a bit overhyped. Uh, yeah, Hereditary, I wasn't too keen on. Um, yeah, so uh, wasn't too keen on Midsummer, Midsummer either. Yeah, uh, and Don't Breathe. I didn't, I didn't really think that was very scary. Yeah, yeah. So, so there you go. Question number five: What horror movies do you think deserve more praise? Again, guys, a difficult one. I've seen so many low budget horror movies over the years. Um, I mean, a lot of these low budget movies, they actually, out, in my opinion, they outshine the big names, the big blockbusters. Yeah, yeah. I've got a good collection of uh, low budget, uh, low budget movies and that. Yeah, um, in the collection. Yeah, uh, roll off a couple. The Hellions, quite a good one. I've done a review of that uh, a few videos back with the, the this force and they rent this uh, in this apartment in this oh skyscraper of a tower block and they get trapped up, trapped up there and there's all these supernatural forces. Uh, Sort of like in in the building, yeah. That's a good one. The Hellion, um, the one with the Jerry Jerry Ryan in the Secrets in the Walls. That's a very good supernatural movie. I, I don't think I've I've heard anybody review that on YouTube other than myself. Yeah, Jack in the Box. That's a good one where they find this old fashioned Jack in the Box and all sorts of strange things happen. I'm waiting for the sequel to come out. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's been loads, guys. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there you go. Um. Question number six. Favourite horror show series. Again, a difficult one, guys. Um, Rod Serling's Night Gallery. That was very good. Shown in the early 70s. Like The Twilight Zone. Because there was some horror elements in that. Uh, Tales from the Crypt. The HBO show that was sold. That was shown from late 80s to early 90s. Yeah, I love the Crypt Keeper. I love the Crypt Keeper puppets in that. Yeah. Um, I like the Psycho, the Bates Motel series as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is until the, uh, the very last episode. Which I thought was... Um, very, very disappointing, yeah. Uh, the one with, uh, you know, the series with Vera, Far Vera Farmiga. Uh, yeah, yeah, I loved it all the way through, but that last episode of two guys, oh, God, it went really, it went really downhill for me, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Masters of Horror, that was another good one. It was shown around about 2004, 2005. You get, like, a horror, a one-hour horror, horror little mini, mini horror movie by a different director, like Dario Argento and so forth, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so there you go. Well, I'll tell you, um, one horror series that did that did disappoint me, and I wasn't too keen on it, was Tales from the Dark Side. I didn't think it was, I didn't think the stories were very good. There was only one or two that were really, and even they weren't really frightening. I thought they were very, very lame. You know, yeah, I did get the box set and that, but I sold it on eBay because I didn't like it, guys. You know, I thought the stories were very weak, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so that's it. So I say, so Tales from the Dark Side is a very disappointing one. But all those others I mentioned, yeah, fantastic, yeah. There's another horror series as well that was made in the act just after Masters of Horror. It's called Fear Itself. And that, that's a sort of like a sequel to the Masters of Horror series. I've got that in my collection. I'll do a review of that at some point, yeah. Again, the same format, like an hour-long horror stories, each each bearing on a different uh, aspect of the horror genre. It's very good, Fear Itself, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so say the dark side ones, I thought a lot of those episodes were quite corny and quite laughable in parts, you know, yeah. Right, okay, we're going to move on now to question seven. What's your favourite horror subgenre? Oh, that's easy. The horror anthology. The horror anthology sub subgenres. I absolutely love the horror anthologies, you know, especially Amicus, Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, you know, I absolutely love them. Just like the Universal movies, I grew up watching them on late night TV, yeah. Uh, another favourite subgenre of mine is the Haunted House subgenre. Yeah, I love the Haunting, the original. Yeah, the Legend of Hell House, the Amityville Horror. Yeah, and I like the vampire subgenres as well, providing that it's they're not sort of like uh, ruined by a uh, soppy teenage angst, angst-ridden, uh, you know, angst-ridden people. You know, like Twilight and that. Never been a great fan of them. I like the vampires to be real mean and scary and dark, like the late great Christopher Lee's Dracula. Yeah. Right, so moving on to question eight. Favourite final girl? Hmm. 
bit tricky. I like Danielle Harris. She's been in a couple of her movies uh, where she's been the final girl, yeah. And, of course, Jamie Lee Curtis in, in Halloween, the Halloween uh, franchise. Uh, yeah, I like quite like uh, Sigourney Weaver's character as well, Ripley, you know, from the Alien from the Alien franchise. Yeah. And then Alice Hardy from Friday the 13th. Question nine. What's something you dislike about horror movies? Oh God, there are so many. Uh, I think there's as there, there as many there, there as many uh, I don't like as there are that I do like. Yeah, uh, for instance, the same old formulaic plots involving teenagers. You know, um, you know, foul mouth teenagers who you don't root for. Uh, you know, you've got you can't invest in them at all. They this is a, this is a, this is a trope that spoils a lot of American, in my opinion, spoils a, a lot of American. A lot of American horror movies, the teenage tropes and that, you know, you're in the car and that, you know, you drive into the woods and that, you know, same old thing and that, larking around for about half an hour into the movie before before anything happens. I, actually, I had two on Prime the other night, just switched off, because they were, they were acting so stupid, the teenagers and that, you know, they were coming out with all sorts of fat, every other word was F this and F that, oh, I'd, I'd turned it off. You know, they go a bit too far, like, with, with the swearing sometimes in some of these movies, guys. And I, I don't like it. You know, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm broad-minded. And that, you know, and I, I do, you know, I, I do accept the odd swear word, like, in, in horror movies or in, in any horror movie. But when it's every other sentence, it's effing this and effing that. It gets a bit too much, guys, yeah. Uh, yeah, other things I don't like, uh, you know, uh, where they, they get sort of, like, the monster chasing them. Uh, and what do they do if they go upstairs? Or they might go into the garage, or they might go into the barn. You know, and um, things like that. The same old, uh, and I don't like found footage as well. Well, I, 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 I made that obvious before, yeah, yeah. And I don't like some of the remakes as well, where they sort of like try to remake the movie, uh, sort of like uh, word for word, basically. And I, I think it's a waste of time, myself, really, you know. And I don't like slow horror movies as well, where nothing much happens. Yeah, loads, I could go on. Right, um, question 10. What's the saddest horror movie that made you cry? Well, I don't really get a, uh, I don't really get lac lacrimose. Uh, I mean, that's tearful. I don't really get a uh, tearful over horror movies and that, you know. Um, but I, I can roll off a couple of examples that sort of like did touch me. That sort of like, uh, you know, made me say, well, that was quite a sad ending, you know. Um, for instance, the ending of The Wicker Man, where uh, poor Sergeant Howie, played by Edward Wood, gets burns and the the gigantic uh, Wicker Man as part of the. Uh, the twisted folk ritual, yeah, it uh, dragged me to hell, you know, the girl gets a piece of paper handed back to her, and of course, hell opens and she's dragged down, yeah, um, the ending of Frankenstein must be destroyed, where Baron Frankenstein, played by the late great Peter Cushion, uh, he sticks a scalpel in the stomach of Veronica, Car Veronica uh, Carlson's character, after she's left the monster out and that, you know, he's sort of like, he, she's got the scalpel in her hand, and he, 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 mani he manipulates it, and he, so that she stabs herself in the stomach, but of course, guided by his hand, yeah, I thought that was quite sad, like, you know, yeah, um, Anna, the character was played by the lovely Veronica Carlson, yeah, one of the saddest uh, endings in, 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 in a horror movie history, yeah, and of course, we mustn't forget that, that Stephen King won The Mist, yeah, I'm sure if you've all seen it, you know what I mean, yeah. Yeah, and if, if you wanted to name a character uh, in, a, in, a, in a horror franchise or whose, whose story was, was con continuously sad, I would cite uh, Lon Chaney Jr., uh, who played Lawrence Talbot in the, in the Wolfman series of the 1940s. He was a very tragic character. You felt sorry for him, like, you know, no matter where he went in every film, no matter who he consulted, he never got cured. But he did, uh, he did get cured in House of Dracula. Yeah, so, but yeah, very, very sad character, and Lon Chaney Jr. was 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 born to play that role, yeah, yeah, one of the most tragic character characters in cinema history, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, mustn't forget Boris Karloff's Frankenstein monster, where he gets, you know, all he wanted to, he didn't really want to be born, all he wanted was sort of like to be accepted and that, but no, he wasn't accepted because of his grotesque appearance, he was hounded, tracked down by the village, well, if you've seen the Universal movies, you know what I mean, yeah, so he was quite a tragic character, yeah. Um, now, moving on to question 11. What's your favourite foreign horror film? Well, I love Suspiria, uh, made by the, directed by the late great Dario Argento. I uh, love the story. I love I loved the general idea. I love, it's a beautifully, beautifully, beautifully coloured movie. You know, uh, the cinematography is fantastic. Uh, and I hope to get the 4K of that eventually, yeah. Um, I like The Ring as well. I like The Ring movies, yeah. 
Um, and I love the bit with the crystal plumage and other Dario Argento classic. Yeah, fantastic movie. Yeah, I must admit I'm not really a great fan of, of foreign most foreign horror movies. And um, but they're the they, they were the pleasing exceptions, guys, yeah. I like Tenebrae as well. That's a good one, yeah. All of Dario Argento's foreign horror movies I like, yeah. Um, I wasn't too keen on the uh, Dracula one uh, that was made a couple of years ago. Yeah, I wasn't too keen on that one, the foreign Dracula. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, moving on to question 11. Your favourite horror movie that started as a book? Again, so many guys. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Stephen King's novels, particularly Misery, Carrie, uh, Pet Cemetery, The Shining, uh, yeah, Ratman's Notebooks, uh, which led to the movie Willard, yeah, by Stephen Gilbert, yeah, that's a good one, yeah, um, I could have said uh, James Herbert's uh, rat, rat film, Deadly Eyes, but what, the, the novel was so much better because what you've done in Deadly Eyes, they, they, they gave Dashens a rat, rat fear. So James Avers himself said when he visited the set, the rats were, were running around barking like dogs because they were Dashens with the fear over them, yeah. Um, oh, there's been so many guys, yeah. Rosemary's Baby's another great one, yeah, that a book spawned, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, finally, we come to um, question 13. So uh, question 13 is, What's a horror movie you're looking forward to watching? Can't really think of all that many, to be to be uh, honest with you. Halloween Kills, obviously, which is coming out tomorrow. Uh, Malignance, and also the sequel to Jack in the Box, which is a, it's a great little rare, uh, rare B-movie. Mo B I can highly recommend Jack in the Box. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so, uh, okay, guys. Well, that wraps up me, uh, me answers to the tag the tag air questions what Leo gave me from the Geek Legion of Doom. Um, I'll, I'll be very interested to hear your comments. Have you seen any of these movies? Do you agree with the choices? Um, yeah, so as I say, uh, I'll leave Leo's link down below, the Geek Legion of Doom. Go along and subscribe and give me support. He's a great guy. I love the way he reviews his movies. He puts everything into it. He loves his horror. Uh, he really puts it over like, you know, the film's failings and, the, and you know, sort of like qualities of a movie and he explains everything very well yeah so give him a, you know give him a like and that subscribe and that yeah okay well that's it then guys hope you enjoyed this tag video um if any of you are going to see the new halloween kills movie tomorrow i hope you all enjoy it yeah okay that's it for now guys speak to you all again soon thanks